It is so good to be here with each of you today. It is going to be a great Sunday. Uh, just a reminder, if you are one of our kiddos and you would like to worship with Miss Sherilyn with yes. the uh, ribbons, you are more than welcome to make your way over here to my right or left. Uh, but let's open up. I want to read Psalm 103. It says, Praise the Lord, my soul, all my inmost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Let's meet God because he wants to meet us in a special way this morning. I believe he wants to bring healing and wholeness in a new way in this place. Lord, we praise you in advance for what you are going to do this morning. Lord, would you turn our hearts and our eyes to you that we would worship you with all that we are. Would you minister to us in a deeply personal way? And we will give you all the glory. All the glory. In your name. Woo. Amen. Yeah. All right, let's get together. Let's stand up together and sing songs of praise to this morning.
holy name, O Lord, God of all things, Jesus. Amen.
work.
pray for uh, a blessing upon those who who give. Lord, uh, not just funds or, or, or money, but give of their time and, and their talents. Lord, we pray that you would make these givings way more abundant, Lord, that you will increase them so that they can bless those who you send it out to bless. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, I was going to read for you from 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 9, Paul is, is writing to the Corinthians, and starting in verse 6, he says, Now I say this, the one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows generously will also reap generously. Each one must do just as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace overflow to you. So that always having all sufficiency in everything you may have an abundance for every good deed. Yes. As it is written, he scatters abroad, he gave to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. Amen. So uh, just let that be a, a lesson. What do you have to sow? You know, do you have prayers? Do you have a shoulder for somebody to cry on? You know, do you have fellowship when somebody is, is lonely and down? Take those that blessing that God's given you, uh, whatever the case may be, and sow it abundantly amongst your fellow church members. Thank you. Amen. Good morning, good morning, good morning, my glorious, beautiful, wonderful day. And all the other words that's flowing around in my mind right now about this day. Oh, it's so good. I'm so excited. Okay, you know, I'm up here for announcements, so we'll just get on to that. Um, we have a, a date change. So last uh, week we announced the, uh, the date for the uh, first uh, Simmons God Ministry paint party. But note, note, it is now September 21st from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. So y'all come on, grab a paintbrush, help us out. If you can only give an hour, that's cool. Come give an hour. Uh, whatever you can get. Help us get those kids, uh, those rooms out there uh, dolled up. Pretty up and all of that. Amen. Um, I guess we're going to do a fall launch. How exciting. God has blessed us with children and youth, with zero to I don't know how many we had last week, Amen. but I mean, so let's step in and we support that and we give God Hallelujah. all the glory Hallelujah. by working and making Amen. it better out there for you. Amen. Oh, and lunch will be provided. I know that's always a winner for me. If you're going to feed me, I'll come and work. So yeah, food's going to be there. 
Cotton Harvest Festival. Now, y'all know that's the new thing, right? So that'll be September 28th. Um, it's going to be really exciting. We're doing something a little different. We are actually in the parade. And guess what? We're looking for children to be part of that parade. Uh, we want you to bring little kids, grandkids, nieces, nephews, uh, whatever you have. We want your children up on that float, showing off. Well, John's showing off. Yeah, showing off our kids. We love our kids. And we're so excited for uh, what Scott has done with our kids. So if you need more information, just get with Katie. Uh, but September 28th, put it on your calendar. The youth will be serving iced coffee. That'll be nice because even though it's last of September, last year it was still quite warm. So a good iced coffee about 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, whatever, you know, is good. Okay, Rock the Pumpkin. It is our fall festival. It'll be October 19th from 4 to 8. There, we're, it's going to be like a festival, guys. We're going to have fun. We're going to have games. We're going to have food. And we're going to have some prizes. But we're not going to tell you about all that. You're just going to have to come back and hear announcements next week. And we'll just give you a little bit more taste of what Rock the Pumpkin is going to be about. Once again, if you like the volunteer, we can use all the help we can get. Um, because I know God is growing this church. And we had a wonderful Easter when we did Easter outreach. Yes. Family Fun Day was more than Easter. So we're going to need your volunteering Selves to come and help because Rock the Pumpkin is going to rock move and we're going to grow. Woo! Yes! All right, all right, all right. All right, all right. All right. Um, I need uh, some volunteers to help us with our communion. Uh, I want to remind you, we do practice open communion here at this church. Um, and that means that we're welcoming to anybody, you know, whether you're part of the church or not, to take part. Um, but you should check your heart, and you should make sure that God is there. Yes. Because it could be, the, the purpose of communion isn't to do a ritual to get you in heaven, but it's to, uh, it's to uh, join in remembering the good things that God has done for you, and hopefully he's done things for you. Yes, he has. Right? So we're going to read, uh, I'm going to read real quick. You guys can go ahead and start passing out, so we will have it by the time we get to things. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. What are we out of uh, our passage, our, our main passage for this? And this is 1 Corinthians uh, 11, 23 through 26. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and, and said, Take, eat this, my body, which is broken for you, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you will proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So I'm going to pray to that as you guys are collecting uh, the elements. Um, we're going to we're going to join together in a little bit, but I want to pray to that. Lord Jesus, I pray that you would just help us to proclaim the message of the gospel, to share it to those that we meet on an everyday basis, to remember how often and how incredible you've done things, the things you've done for us are. I pray, Lord God, that you would guide us uh, to step forward in your grace, to realize, Lord God, the victory on the cross is not just a momentary thing, but it's a continual thing within us. Each day we think through what all victory we get from that cross, Lord Jesus. Guide us, Lord, in your love and your grace. Thank you, Lord God. Yes, so, I need. Aww. Everybody got that needs uh, the bread and the cup? I guess we're still passing up. Um, oh, like I said, I want to remind you guys this is an open and. Um, I'm spilling everywhere. <laughs> Can't do two things at once. All right. Um, I'll put that one down. Uh, this is an open uh, communion, and I want you guys to make sure that you're joining in in, in the process of it all. And let God speak to you throughout this time. Uh, this is a, an important moment uh, for our services. Um, and that's why we, we, we try to do with all the family here so that they can join in too and be part of it. There's still a few left.
All right, I'm gonna, we're going to pray over the bread. Um, we'll, we'll read another passage, though, before we go into that. Uh, so Luke 22. And he took the bread, and he went, and he had given thanks. He broke it and, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So, I want you to grab this bread, if you haven't gotten it yet. Work with him for my prayer, and you'll get, you'll get one. Lord Jesus, I pray, Lord God, that you would help us to remember the importance of this bread. We would be able to, to, to establish an understanding of what you did on the cross, how your body was beaten and bruised, how difficult it was, but it had to be that way for our sins to be forgiven. You did so many great things, took on so much, such a beauty for our sins, but yet one victory, not just by dying on the cross, but rising again and <laughs> taking, uh, destroying death and the, the power yes, of sin. Yes, yes. Oh, we thank you for what you're doing in Jesus. Let's take this bread together. Hold for these guys. Let's hold the bread together. took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. For this is my beloved of the covenant, who is poured out for me for the forgiveness of sins. But we thank you for what this cup represents. Hallelujah, yes. The blood that was shared, that was poured out on the cross, for our sins to be forgiven. We thank you, O God, knowing that you, in this intimate moment with just a few disciples, you shared something that was important that would last till now. How important it was to remember, to think about, to believe and trust you over and over and over again. To know that the sacrifice is enough for our sins. But we believe it, Lord Jesus. Guide us in your love. Amen. Amen. Okay. Thank you guys for joining mm -hmm. in the union. Now, I I need to dismiss all of our kids. If you are a kid and you want to go to our kids' ministry, the air conditioner is working this week. I apologize for that last week, but everybody give a hand clap to that. Yes. Brother Bob came up here and fixed it. Uh, such a blessing to us. So. Um, so all of our kids, please uh, go out and see Sister Lisa if you're going to go with the kids' ministry, if you're going to go to the nursery toddlers, um, we'll also meet back there. Yes, yes. They'll, they'll find you in the right spot. Um, is everybody exiting? Thank you kids for being here. We're glad you're here. Yes. How do we have such a good group going out? Thank you. Amen, so, amen, amen. while they're exiting, I want to uh, give us, you guys, to welcome my, with our speaker today. It's not going to be me this today. Um, it's going to be my, my father, so it's like, like a similar version. <laughs> <laughs> but, but much wider. <laughs> uh, but, uh, so, I have a, a it's, uh, as a special request, and I've been telling people this, from my wife, Katie, she asked that I not be preparing a message or working on it on the Saturday of her birthday. So uh, I asked my father to come fill in for me this Sunday. So uh, I want to give him plenty of time. I feel like I haven't given him enough time. But uh, so if he go, we go a little late today, it's, it's on me, not on oh, okay. me. So, uh, so you guys uh, welcome him as he comes up. This is yeah. my dad. 
Waymakers in the house. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. I'm glad the, the miracle workers in the house. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come yes. on. You yes. say amen if you want to. Yes. Uh, I'm an old fashioned preacher. I like a lot of amens. All right. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. I'm going to move this over just a little bit because I sometimes I feel like a big dog on a short chain when I get behind <laughs> But anyway. Hallelujah. How I many you blessed the Lord today? Yes. How many blessed to be in the house yes. of the Lord today? Hallelujah. God is good. Amen? Yes. Amen. 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 It's always a privilege for my wife and I to, to stand behind this pulpit that is occupied by our, I'll say our kids. Uh, uh, yes. by yeah. Andrew and, yeah. and Katie and, and the pastors of this house. And we're just blessed to be here. It's an honor for me to always uh, come and stand here uh, knowing that uh, they occupy this pulpit. And Amen. it's just a blessing for my wife and I to be here yeah. today. And... and uh, we're blessed. Amen. I'm going to get right to the Word so that I won't keep you too long. Because I do have a lot to say. After I got through looking at it again early this morning, I said, maybe this is too long. But anyway, <laughs> would you stand for the reading of the Word one more time? I'll have you stand. Open your Bibles. Read it. Exodus chapter 33. Exodus 33. Hallelujah. And uh, happy birthday, Katie. Yeah. <laughs> I won't sing. She says hallelujah. <laughs> I don't have the gifts my son has in the in the music area. I, I tell a story about that, but I won't waste time doing that. But uh, praise the Lord, he it, it skipped this generation and landed on him. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Exodus chapter thirty-three. You got to say Amen or Omi or something. Say Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Exodus thirty-three, verse one says, "And the Lord said unto Moses, Depart and go up hence. Thou and the people which thou hast brought up out of the land of Egypt." Unto the land which I swore unto Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, saying, Unto thy seed will I give it. And I will send an angel before thee, and I will drive out the Canaanite, the Amorite, the Hittite, the Perizzite, the Hevite, the Jebusites, and all the ites, <laughs> unto a land flowing with milk and honey. For I will, but I will not go in the midst of thee, for thou art a stiff-necked people, lest I consume thee in the way. Verse 15 says, And he said unto him, Moses, If thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. For wherein shall it be known here that I, thy people, have found grace in thy sight? It is not in that thou goest with us, so shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken. For thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. And he said, I beseech you, show me thy glory. Show me thy glory. Hallelujah. Show me thy glory. Amen. Father, we thank you this morning that you are here. <laughs> and I just pray right now to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Heavenly Father, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you would just quicken our minds right now with wisdom and understanding that we might know you better. I pray, God, that you would open our eyes so that we can see this morning the, the, the hope and the riches and the power that is for those who believe. I pray, God, that you would come and open our ears that we might hear what the Spirit has to say to the church today. I pray for me, God, that right now you would give me prophetic utterance that I might be able to proclaim with liberty all that you placed in my heart, all of the gospel, the mystery of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes. Father, we just thank you for it today. We believe you're going to transform our lives in a way that we never thought possible. In Jesus' name we believe. And everybody said, Amen. Say it real loud. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a true story. They say, well, that's a true story. It's not what they say. <laughs> if it's true, it's true, right? I heard somebody try to say that, that there's truth and then there's, there's big truth and little truth. But truth is truth. Anyway. Right. True story. I got to go off on that one. Didn't I? <laughs> About a woman in Kansas City, Missouri. She was downtown 
and she decided to get an ice cream cone, and so she walked in to a haagen store. How many like haagen -Dazs? <laughs> and she went up to the counter after she'd waited in line a little bit. I'm making you have to work on it. Yeah, that's uh, right. Uh, uh, <laughs> she, 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 I'm going to try to not get too close. Anyway, so she walked in and she waited in line. She ordered her ice cream cone. After she ordered her ice cream cone, she started to fill it in her purse to get her money out to pay. And when she turned to look behind her to see who was in line behind her, the man in line behind her was somebody very famous by the name of Paul Newman. I, I don't know if you all know who Paul Newman was, but Paul Newman was an actor and a famous actor and, and the heartthrob of his generation. And, and, and when she turned around and she saw Paul Newman and she looked into those blue eyes, all of a sudden her knees got weak and, and her heart began to palpitate and, and, and her mouth fell open and she was about to slobber on herself as, as she looked and it was Paul Newman standing in line behind her. And, and so uh, finally the attendant there kind of got her attention and said, you need to pay, you know. And, and so she, she fumbled with her money and got it out and, and, and finally she, she walked out of the door of the ice cream store and out on the street and... And she took a couple of breaths and she got her composure back and her heart calmed down and, 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 and she realized she didn't have her ice cream cone. Oh, no. <laughs> and so she turned around and she walked back and she opened up the door and sure enough, as soon as she opened up the door, here comes Paul Newman again and again. Oh. Her knees got weak again and, and, and her mouth drops open again and, and her heart is beating out of her chest and, and Paul Newman looks at her and says, are you looking for your ice cream cone? And she goes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he goes, you put it in your purse with your change. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't know what it's like to swoon. <laughs> <laughs> over a, a movie star. I, I don't know what it's like to, to swoon over a celebrity. But I do know something this morning. Yeah. I know what it's like for my emotions to jump off the chart in the presence of the Lord. I know what it's like to, to walk into to the presence and the glory of God and, and, and feel the presence of God so strong that I can hardly walk against it. I know what it's like to walk into the presence and the glory of God and be able to do nothing else but weep and cry. I know what it's like to be in church services where people who are bound by the powers of the enemy come walking in the back door and when they hit the presence of God, fall on their faces and <laughs> I know what it's like to see God show up yes. in a city in His glory and His power to where the city shuts down and everybody comes running for the presence of God and God transforms life. I know what it's like. Mm. And that's what I want to preach about. All right, all right. And that's what this story is about. This story here in Exodus 33 takes place just a few months past or after, after God has miraculously, Sunday school teacher, you taught the beginning to give all the intro to my message. <laughs> They're in Exodus. And, and they've just been delivered out of Egypt miraculously, 400 years of bondage and slavery. God's brought them through the Red Sea. He's brought them He's destroyed Pharaoh's army. He's brought them through the desert. And they're camping now at the foot of Mount Sinai. And God has already called Moses up to the mountain. He's already gone up. And God has given him the law for 40 days and 40 nights. And while he was gone, the people got impatient. Yeah. Yeah. And they took the gold that they brought out of Egypt and they made a golden calf. And they began to worship the golden calf. And not only did they worship in idolatry the golden calf, but they began to worship it in a hedonistic uh, uh, form. They, they began to enter into lasciviousness and lustfulness yeah. and evil desires mm. in their worship. Yes. And God hears what's going on. He says, Moses, get back down. Mm -hmm. and Moses comes down and he's so angry, he breaks the tablets of the law. But if you think Moses was angry, God was angry. 
all of a sudden the glory cloud comes down on the tent of meeting and he calls Moses in and I don't know any other way to say it. Texas, we say he was fit to be tied and spit nails. He was mad. Yeah. <laughs> and he said, Moses, I'm going to destroy them all. And this stiff necked bunch of people that don't obey me, they don't serve me. I'm going to get rid of all of them. I'm going to destroy them. And Moses says, God, don't do it. Mm-hmm. He begins to plead like a pastor. <laughs> God, don't just destroy them. They're your people. They're not my people. They're your people. He, he cries out to God. And God relents. And God says, all right. All right, I won't destroy them. But, get out of here. <laughs> Take, get your camp going. Get on into the promised land. I'm going to send an angel before you. He, he's going to drive out all the ice. He's going to show you the way. But I'm not going with you. Hmm. My presence is not going with you. When the children of Israel, Moses, heard that, they threw off all the ornaments that they were wearing, all the gold and the stuff. They had already destroyed the calf. They threw all that off and they fell on their faces in repentance and crying out to God. And Moses says, God, if you don't go with us, if you're not going with us, then, then, then we're not going. <laughs> if you don't go with us, we're not going to go. <laughs> First thing I, I want you to learn, the lesson from this passage this morning, is the importance and the significance of living in the presence of God. You see, the children of Israel, and especially Moses, knew what it was like. You see, this sounds like a great deal, doesn't it? It sounds like a good deal, Brother Piano Player. <laughs> you get to have the provision and the protection, you still get to go in the promised land, and you don't have to obey God. You don't have to serve God. Sounds like a pretty good deal. A lot of people are wanting that deal. There's a lot of people looking for that kind of deal. A lot of people in the world, that's what they want. I want God's provision. Every time they get in trouble, come on. I want God's protection. Sounds like a great deal. But Moses and the children of Israel knew something we've got to understand. You see, Moses knew what it was like to have protection and provision without presence. He had already been protected by God. He had already been provided for by God. When, when all the babies were being killed, God provided for him an ark and he was found by Pharaoh's daughter and he spent 40 years living as a son in Pharaoh's house, as a prince in Pharaoh's house. He had everything provided for him. He had everything he wanted. His education, his food, every need that he had, it was all provided for him, but he didn't have the presence of God. And because of that, he was discontent. He was discouraged. He was in bondage. And his discouragement was so great that one day he goes out and he kills a man. He murders a soldier because he's discontent. He's in bondage. He's enslaved because he doesn't have the presence of God. Come on now. But he also knew what it was like. He knew what it was like to live and walk. Yes. He knew. He's on the back side of the desert. Mm-hmm. After, after 40 years in Pharaoh's house, he was 40 years on the back side of the desert. That means nobody knew where he was at. Nobody cared about him. Society giving up on him. Everybody throwing him away like trash. He, he was out there taking care of his father-in-law's sheep. Nobody knew what was going on with him. And all of a sudden, God shows up mm-hmm. in a burning bush. In a burning bush. And when he comes and he enters in, Pastor, to relationship and fellowship with God, that's when what happens? He starts walking on holy ground. He understood the importance of the presence of God. Come on now, church. I believe it's time that you and I understood in this generation the importance of living in the presence of God. I'm already on page two and don't even know it. Uh oh. The word here for presence 
in the Hebrew, in the Old Testament Hebrew, is the word paniam. And paniam actually means face or countenance. And it implies in its meaning that to have somebody present with you, to have somebody face to face, their countenance, their presence, interacting, influencing, the presence with you, it implies relationship and fellowship. I guess the best way to describe it is to talk about salt. Mm, yeah. How many you know what salt is? Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Yes. That was a rhetorical question. No. <laughs> you know what salt is? Is that little white grainy stuff? Morton's? Or whatever brand you use? My wife's been getting cheaper lately, I think. Anyway. <laughs> And, and when you're cooking, ladies, what do you do? Sprinkle it on. Pinch it. Mm -hmm. You put salt in. And when it goes in, it disappears. And then when it's placed on the table, Ooh, yummy. you can't see that it's there. You can't see it until you take that fork or spoon or whatever you use and, and, and put it in your mouth. And when you put it in your mouth, you know that it's been salted, right? Yep. Yeah. 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 You yeah. see, salt is the unseen influence. <laughs> Come on, man. Salt is that unseen thing. Even when I don't see Salt is that unseen thing that's in the food. And you may not see it, but you know that it's there. That's what the presence of God is all about. That's what the presence of God is. It's that unseen influence in our lives. Oh, come on now. You might not see it, but He's working. You may not feel it always, but you know that He's there. Woo! That's why the Bible uses the same word. In Psalm 16, it says, In the presence, in the pandemonium of the Lord, there is fullness of what? Joy. joy. In the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy. The Bible says in the presence of the Lord, there's peace. In the presence of the Lord, there's comfort. In the presence of the Lord, there's strength. In the presence of the Lord, all fear is cast out. In the presence of the Lord, there's hope. In the presence of the Lord, the Bible says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, there's authority. In the Woo! presence of the Lord, yes. the devil trembles and hell shakes and Woo! demons flee. In the presence yes. of the Lord. That's why it's critical. It's critical that you and I understand why Jesus came. Why did the Son of God leave His throne and glory, leave heaven? Where we're all trying to get to. Why did He leave heaven, come to earth, became flesh, and dwelt among us? was beaten, bruised, marred beyond recognition, and then went and allowed them to nail Him to an old rugged cross and give His life on Calvary. Why? He did it so you and I can return to relationship and fellowship and live in the presence of God. Jesus came and He took your sins and my sins yes, and He went and paid the penalty that we all deserve, the penalty of death. He paid the price, the justice of God. And now you and I have the opportunity, church, to not be on the outside anymore, but we can through relationship and fellowship through Jesus Christ live in the presence of Almighty God. Woo! Hallelujah. Yes. Woo! Come on. I've been waiting to preach this all week. It's what Corinthians says. It says, All things are of God, who hath reconciled, restored, brought back us to Himself by Jesus Christ. He's, he's restored our ability to be in relationship with God, Jesus. And have given us the ministry of reconciliation. Those who have been reconciled, we, we have the ministry to go out and bring others 
into restoration. Bring others through Christ. Take the gospel to others so that they might have relationship, fellowship, and live in the presence of God. To wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto Himself. Thank you. you know who wrote that? Sunday school teacher does. Paul. <laughs> Paul wrote that. But that wasn't always his name, was it? Wasn't his name also Saul? Yeah. You know why he changed his name? Because when he was Saul, he was a bad dude. He was a bad man. He was evil. He lived his life beating up people, torturing people, anybody that disagreed with him. He lived his life torturing and murdering Christians. He blasphemed God. He was evil. He was evil. But one day, he old Saul had an encounter with Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus. And when he entered in through Jesus, receiving Jesus as his Lord and Savior, entered into relationship and fellowship again with God. You see, he knew what it was like to walk and live in the presence of God. Come on now. Hmm. Being a Christian is not just about provision. It's not about living protected or in provision, but it's really all about relationship with Amen. God. It's about living in the presence of God. Amen. We were down in Argentina preaching and uh, it was a really tough schedule and in the middle of it, I've been there like I don't know how many weeks. But I was preaching nearly every day. They didn't give me any days off. <laughs> Sometimes two or three times a day. Oh, wow. And, and I got pneumonia in my right lung and I was just sick. Mm. And, and <laughs> you, don't, you, know, you don't go asking a woman of God to try to get pity. No. <laughs> I don't feel good. I don't feel good. Come on, big boy. Why'd you come down here for? Sit around, be sick, and preach. Come on. <laughs> and so, so we were staying at a pastor's home this whole time, and and, and there was another pastor in town, Presbyterian pastor, who was a doctor. And so every morning he would send his nurse over to the house, and they give me a shot just so I could preach another day. Oh wow. <laughs> and we were usually traveling two hours or more to preach. But anyway, I'm making this too long. And so the last weekend, I mean, we were just scheduled. On Saturday, uh, I was scheduled to preach a ministry meeting and have a big asylum, which is a big barbecue uh, with all the Argentine pastors and fellowship. And in the evening, there was a, an area-wide youth rally scheduled about two hours from where we were staying. So we drove, got up, got my shot, and we drove. <laughs> and we got there, and I preached the minister's meeting, and the minister was just so hungry for God. And they ran to the altars and... And I spent hours just ministering and praying with pastors. And, and then we had this big cookout, this big meal of salo uh, and, and ate. And it was way into the afternoon before we got through. And, and the youth rally was set or scheduled for early uh, that evening. And, and they had gotten us a hotel just so I could change clothes. But that's about all I did. I looked at my notes and changed clothes and we went back. And when we got there, I didn't feel good, Katie. I was sick. I was feeling sorry for myself. She wasn't going to feel sorry for me. No. <laughs> and I got up and preached. And I was just worn, tired. The young people just responded and ran to the altars. I didn't want to go out and pray, but I did. And I stepped off the platform and went out and, and the first person God directed me to almost well, was a young girl and I don't normally do that but, but I came and I felt like I was just supposed to put my arms kind of around her like that and whisper in her ear that, that you're tired. You're tired of what the devil's done to you. You're tired of the lies of Satan in your life. You're tired of what he's done to you. You need to receive Jesus right now. And she just cried out unto the Lord and began to cry. And then all of a sudden, the presence of the power of God hit her. And she fell out on the floor in the presence of God. And no more did she hit the floor. And she started laughing. Yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't know what was going on. I was still praying for people. And I, all of a sudden, one of the pastors pulled me over and said, 
Brother Steve, that young girl, she had just started attending the youth at our church. She's just starting to come. She hadn't really made a profession of faith. She just started coming and she was targeted by a predator, a rapist. Mm. And he got her, found her alone and he brutally raped her, brutally raped her. And they've caught him and he's in jail, but we didn't know what was going to happen. We didn't know what was going to happen with her. But she was here tonight. <laughs> And she came forward. And she received Jesus Christ as her Savior. And now I know what was happening with all that laughter. Because in the presence of my God, there's fullness of joy. And the joy of the Lord was healing all the hurt. The joy of the Lord was healing all the scar. The joy of God. And she got up transformed by the power. Hallelujah, yes. You don't have to stay on the outside anymore. The veil is rent. <laughs> the veil is rent through Jesus. We have the opportunity. We don't have to be out of His presence anymore. Through your relationship with God, through Jesus Christ, you can live in the presence. Yes. Yes. Presence of God. Yes. In Texas, he said, we ain't going unless you go with us. God says, all right. He relents again. <laughs> oh, how he loves you and me. Right. He was so mad, ready to kill them all, and then he relented once. Then he relented again because he loves us. Right. Yeah. Right. All right, I'll go in you. My presence will go in you. They both said, whoa, that ain't enough. I want to see your glory. Mm. Second lesson I want you to learn, and I'm already on page three and I only got three, so hallelujah. No. <laughs> Not only do we need to understand the significance of living in the presence of God. But I believe from this text we need to learn and understand the significance of living with the glory of God. You see, this text makes a distinction. It makes a distinction between the presence of God and the glory of God. It does that by using different vocabulary, two different Hebrew words. We've already talked about paneum, which, is, which was used for the presence of God. And paneum means what? Face, countenance, present amongst us. But he uses another word when he talks about the glory of God. So he's making a distinction between the presence and the glory. And the word that he uses is kabod. And kabod, though it has a lot of different meanings, although it has a lot of different uses in the Old Testament, in this context, in this text, it actually means the manifest presence of God. Not just the presence of God, but the manifest presence of God. Now, now, how do I explain that? Let's explain it this way. I knew how I was going to do it. <laughs> it's the difference between salt and light. Mm. Now, what did we say salt was? Quiz. Unseen, Unseen influence. It's what you put in the food. You can't see it, but you know it's there. But when we talk about light, salt is the unseen influence, but light is the visible manifestation. Yeah. <laughs> Some of you going to get this today. You see, light is the visible manifestation that Pastor turned on the light switch this morning. Light is the visible manifestation that somebody put a match to a candle. Light is the visible manifestation that the sun has come up in the morning. People shama, you know, he's starting to get this. You see, light is the observable evidence. I'm going to carried away, I'm sorry. It's time we understood the significance of living with the glory of God. You see, Moses. You may think he was pretty bold, but Moses had already seen the demonstration 
of God's presence. He had already seen the manifestation. He had already seen the observable evidence of God's presence. He saw it on the back side of the desert when that bush caught on fire and didn't get consumed. He saw it when he stood before Pharaoh and Aaron threw down his staff and it became a serpent of observable evidence <laughs> that God was in the house. He He saw it through the plagues that came upon Egypt. Observable evidence that God was at work. Come on now. He saw it when He stood before the Red Sea and the sea parted. The visible evidence of God's manifestation and presence. And He saw it as a fire by night and a cloud by day. Is somebody following me? Amen. You see, it's time we understood like Moses that God demonstrates His presence, that He manifests His presence through His judgment, through His salvation, and through His power. Yeah. I see you on somebody. Mm. <laughs> You see, the observable manifestation that God's in the house is miracles. Yes. Signs and wonders, and healings, and provision. Come on. Right? Yeah. yeah. Come on. That's what he was trying to teach when his buddy Lazarus got sick. And died. He came to him and said, Let us sick and dying. Jesus says, No. He said, This sickness is not unto death. <laughs> he said, This is for what? The glory, glory of God. <laughs> the observable evidence of God. Yes. <laughs> right. And he died. Right. And so Jesus gets there, Mary Martha waiting. Why are you coming? Jesus said, well, I'm here. If you just come, he'd be, he'd be alive today. You know, He'd already had his funeral, put him in the tomb. And he said, Martha, Mary, your brother will live again. Well, I know the resurrection in the future. No, 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 no. I am the resurrection and the life of him. Believe it on me. Though he be dead, yet shall he live. Yeah. And so he goes to the tomb. They take the stone away. Jesus is groaning in his spirit. And Martha still hadn't got it. What I'm trying to teach to you this morning. She still hadn't got it. Right. She comes up and says, come on, Lord. <laughs> he been dead four days. By now he's rotten and stinking. He stinketh by now. <laughs> Jesus looks at her and says, Martha, didn't I tell you? <laughs> if you'd only believe, yeah, you would yeah. see the glory of God. Oh, yeah. And he says, Lazarus, come forth. <laughs> and old Lazarus kicked off the stink and he come walking out. Hallelujah. Raised from the dead by the power of Almighty God. Is somebody here in the house? Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Kicked off the stink. God's method, spiritual accomplishment, has not changed. Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. You see, let me, get, let, me, let me step right here back. You see, it's not only critical that we understand this morning why Jesus came, but we understand why Jesus went away. What did He say? I, I'm going away. Why? Because it's expedient for you. It's better for you. Right. Yeah. What that word means. Yeah. He says, it's going to be better for you that I go away because I'm going to send another. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit, the third person that God had, yes. the Holy Spirit Himself. I'm going to send Him. Yes. <laughs> and when He comes, yeah, He's going to reprove the world of sin and the righteous. He's going to be on a mission. But also, when He comes, when you receive Him, when you receive the Holy Ghost, when you receive the Holy Ghost, ye shall receive power. <laughs> power. power to do what? To be witnesses of me. To be witnesses of my presence. To be witnesses of my glory. To go forth and share the gospel in all the earth. All the earth. God's methods haven't changed. Jesus said what? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Holy Spirit's upon me. Mm -hmm. And He hath anointed me 
to heal, yeah. to restore, to liberate. <laughs> Lazarus was raised from the dead in the power of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Yeah. Uh oh, come on. Yes, he was. Yeah. The lame in the Bible walked yep. through the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The blind saw through the power of the Holy Ghost. It's that same Spirit that was poured out on the day of Pentecost that Jesus said, after that, after that, after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, ye shall receive power. Woo! Yes, hallelujah. Mm. I'm close. <laughs> I'm going to jump to my last story. We were in Venezuela preaching and we were traveling all around Caracas preaching in area meetings every day, different meeting. And one of the meetings came and God was just doing great things in all the meetings. And this meeting I preached and people just, the Holy Spirit was there, the presence of God and drawing people. And they just rushed to the altars, received Christ. And mm. I, I didn't know most of their needs. I didn't know why most of them came. I just believed they all needed Jesus. And so yeah. I was praying for people. And I, I came up to this woman. And I didn't say anything to her. I just laid my hands on her and began to pray. And all of a sudden, the power of God just hits her. And, and the presence of God just came all over her. And, and she just fell out on the ground. And as she's laying there on the ground, the next thing I know, she's speaking in tongues according to the Scripture. After the, after the Bible says in Acts 2, what? That you shall, yes. they, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave up. In other words, she was baptized. She received the Holy Ghost. Yeah. She received the baptism in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> she was just speaking in tongues. I mean, loud. And I thought, well, that's why she came. She needed the Holy Ghost. And, and she received the Holy Ghost. So I just went on praying for people. And I didn't give but just about three or four people away. When all of a sudden she shook herself. And she sat up. And she screams out, I can talk! I can talk! Well, I just assumed that what she meant was she received the Holy Ghost. And she's speaking in tongues. I can talk in tongues. I thought that's what she meant. I can talk! But after service, I got the rest of the story. And the rest of the story was she'd been in an automobile accident and she nearly died. And the doctor said they would work very hard to, to get her back to life. And, and she had had multiple surgeries to, to, for bones and even internal organs that were damaged. And, and they had done everything except one thing. She had received a severe blow to her larynx, to her voice box. And from that moment of the accident, she had not been able to speak. She had not been able to speak a single word. And the doctors had done everything. They had tried medications and shock treatments and surgeries. And they had determined that she would be mute the rest of her life. That she would never speak again. But all of a sudden... <laughs> All of a sudden, the glory of God. <laughs> all of a sudden, the observable evidence that God was in the house. And when she began to speak in tongues, she didn't just get baptized in the Holy Ghost, but she was miraculously healed. Woo! Yes. Yes. Stand up so I'll shut up. <laughs> Glad the kids aren't here. I'm not supposed to say shit up from them. You are here. Yes. 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 And as the Spanish version of that song says, God, we see you move. We know your presence and your glory is in this house. Holy Spirit, do your work right now. I want you to keep your eyes closed for just a moment. I want to just give you a couple of instructions. First of all, the glory of God, the presence of God, they are to be experienced. It's not just something that we believe in. 
It's not just something that's a doctrine or we get from a list of theological books. <laughs> but it's an experience. <laughs> That's only the, 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 it's to be experienced. The presence, it's that unseen influence and, and you experience it. It's that visible manifestation and it's to be experienced. You have to experience it through you. And the second thing is, it is experienced, they are experienced both through Jesus. The Bible says that when Moses said, God, let me see your glory. God says, Moses, there's a place near me. Mm. There's a place near me where you can stand on the rock <laughs> and be in my presence and see my glory. Mm. The rock throughout the Bible, throughout the Old Testament, into the New Testament is always symbolic of Jesus. Yeah. He is the stone that the builders rejected, the New Testament says, that has become the head of the corner. He is the rock on which the builder built his house. And when the storm came, the house stood firm. He's the rock of our salvation. And what the Scripture is telling us here is that if we're going to experience the presence of God, it's through Jesus. It's through relationship with God through Jesus Christ. If you've never experienced the presence of God like I'm talking about this morning, it's only experienced when you come and you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And when you experience Him as your Lord and Savior, you enter into relationship and fellowship and live in the presence of God. The glory of God is only experienced by standing on the rock. He is the baptizer. He is the baptizer in the Holy Ghost. He is the one who, who baptizes us when we receive, when we receive the Holy Spirit, when we receive the third person of the Godhead and, and by faith and we begin to speak in tongues. It's Jesus who baptizes us yes. in the Holy Ghost. And we receive power. Yeah. He's here today. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you're facing. I don't know your circumstance. I don't know what's going on in your life. I feel strongly that some of you are here this morning and you've been living outside the presence. Mm. <laughs> Maybe you've been going all along looking for provision or looking for protection when what you've been needing to look for is the person, the presence of Jesus Christ this morning. What you need to find is Jesus. You'll experience the presence of God. You're here this morning and you don't know Jesus as your Savior. In just a moment, I'm, I'm just going to invite all those who want to come to come. I want you to come with them. Just come up to this altar and raise your hands in this altar. Somebody will pray with you, but more importantly, when you take that step of faith, receiving Christ this morning into your life, receiving Him as your Lord and Savior, you're going to step into a relationship with God and the presence of God's going to meet you here. Maybe you've never been baptized in the Holy Ghost. You haven't spoken tongues or allowed the Spirit of God to move on you recently. <laughs> I want you to know the baptizers in the house. And if you'll just respond when I say come to this altar and raise your hands up to Him. He will baptize you fresh or baptize you for the first time. And you can have that relationship to the Holy Ghost empowered and knowing and see the glory of God in your life. Maybe you're sick in body. Maybe you have a need in your family. Maybe you have a financial problem. I want to invite you to come too because the glory is already here. <laughs> and there's going to be observable evidence that God's in the house this morning. I believe He's going to heal bodies. I believe, I believe He's going to meet financial needs. I believe she He's going to touch families today. He's going to move in hearts and lives and meet us today at the point of our need. Right now, in Jesus' name, I'm just in the Holy Ghost freedom right now. 
He's, he's drawing, he's drawing, he's drawing. If the Holy Ghost is drawing you right now for whatever reason, if you, if whatever needs you have, whatever needs you have, right now, just come, 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 come. Come down to the front of the building here and just raise your hands up to God. Somebody's going to pray with you. Somebody's going to pray with you. But most importantly, the Holy Spirit is here. The presence of God is here. The glory of God is here. Come on, come running, come running, come running. Come walking, come any way you can get here, get here. Come crawling, whatever you got to do to get to Him. Get to Him right now. Come on, come on. It's that act of faith. It's 